it's interesting, Ms. May's stories uh, from her perspective when she's read the unredacted and report to now seems to have changed quite a bit in, in tone and scope. So I just find that interesting uh, that her perspective has changed. Uh, just a recent. So anyway, um, I would say though this um, this amendment to ensure that the names are released would be in line with a number of what our allies do. For example, United Kingdom rightfully names and shames any members of parliament who are acting in a tre treasonous manner or who are colluding with foreign countries to undermine the United Kingdom's uh, national interest. And I do believe that Canada should be doing the same. And I agree with my colleague, Dane Lloyd, that otherwise, you know, the Prime Minister seems to just be weaponizing this so-called secret information that he continues to talk about without actually saying the names to his own advantage. And I certainly would agree with the former NDP leader uh, who, you know, um, sort of be won many more seats than the current leader of the NDP and has said again just recently, I agree completely with Mr. Polyev's decision not to take the bait, that is, he's referring to uh, Mr. Trudeau's uh, allegation or Mr. Trudeau's claims. He said, Trudeau has been trying for a year and a half to restrain what Pierre Polyev can do by trying to say, come on, get this private briefing, and oh, by the way, then you'll be held to an official secret and you won't be able to talk about this anymore. So it seems notable and um, frankly formidable NDP former leaders would agree with Pierre Polyev, our leader of the Conservative Party, that any effort to, to do this is really an effort to, to put him under some sort of gag order so he can't uh, really do his duty to hold the Prime Minister accountable for matters of foreign interference. So it's interesting to see now under Mr. Singh that uh, Mr. Singh is working hand in hand with Mr. Mr. Trudeau yet again to try to gag order Pierre Paglia from being able to speak about this issue. So it's interesting that Mr. Singh recently made a big show of ripping up some so-called, uh, you know, it was really an informal coalition with the Liberal government, but it would appear now they're really helping Mr. Trudeau to carry carry water on uh, on the, you know, really shameless partisan politics he's playing in the foreign interference inquiry, which until this point has been a quite a serious and respectable and uh, professional undertaking until the Prime Minister decided to make some sort of ruthless and shameless political show in a circus out of the whole affair. And I think what's really important for this committee to remember, and certainly Canadians will, that the Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, had to be dragged kicking and screaming into this foreign interference inquiry. You'll remember, Mr. Chair, that he had first denied there was any election interference from China, for example, denied anything was going on with the member of Don Valley North in that nomination. And yet here we are in a foreign interference inquiry, and not only is there clear interference from China, but also from India and from Iran and Pakistan and Russia. We have, in fact, at the worst point in history when it comes to a foreign interference, and we've had the same Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, for nine years. So what does that say about his leadership or lack thereof? And I would also point out that the person in this country most responsible for foreign interference and preventing it and keeping national security safe is the Prime Minister of Canada. And so if we've had the same Prime Minister of Canada, and now this has come to such a point that 13 individuals, the RCMP had to announce 13 individuals are in peril because foreign interference has gotten so bad, what does that really say about his leadership? So what's interesting to me is that in the foreign interference inquiry, which he's made a farce of with his recent partisan attacks, that he's really trying to, to do two things. Number one, distract from his failed record to prevent foreign interference in this country. The fact that he's created an environment that's worse than ever at any time in Canadian history of foreign interference, that other foreign adversaries and others feel that, that we are a weak country, that they can bully under Prime Minister Trudeau's so-called leadership. And the second thing, of course, Mr. Chair, is that the Prime Minister is trying to distract from the fact that he has an ongoing revolt in his caucus looking to overthrow him. So it's no wonder why he's doing this, but certainly if he continues, as my colleague said, to weaponize this, then he should release the names because Canadians deserve to know who it is in Parliament right now or in, in the past who has been undermining the national interest on purpose uh, to aid a foreign country. They absolutely deserve to know that and those individuals need to be held accountable. And I would also say that 
it's interesting that he won't do so, and I wonder why that is. Well, perhaps it's because out of any party, it makes the Liberal Party look bad. Again, he was the one who denied that there was election interference from China, for example. He's the one who denied there was any issue here at all, and yet here we are. So he continues to deny that there's any issue there, but I would suspect that's why he's not releasing the name. So I think we could put this to bed. It's rapidly devolving into some McCarthy witch hunt as a result of the Prime Minister's actions, and I think we can easily clear this up today by releasing the names. Canadians deserve to know, and the Prime Minister should be showing leadership in this regard and ensuring that he's actually taking action on this intelligence. And I would say in the last thing, Mr. Chair, that it's not clear why the why we are taking intelligence if we're not able to utilize it to ensure that these individuals are held accountable. And if they're semi-witting or unwittingly knowing, then they should know, then they should be informed. And so I think it is imperative that Parliament learn who these people are, if any, and and move forward with that information. And Mr. Chair, I'd also say that, again, the responsibility for national security lies with the Prime Minister. The only reason we are here is because he's failed to protect that, Mr. Chair. Thank you.